mean, I wanted uh, to begin by asking Umberto Eco about a particular thing. You said that the contemporary poets, the ones that are commonly known as the cannibals, have acknowledged uh, their debt towards the Gruppo 63. But I'm wondering, Gruppo 63 acknowledged their debts to futurism. I'm asking it because in 1963, futurism was still ostracized because of its collusion with fascism. And therefore, there was a sense of rejection of that past. But uh, the intellectuals that got together to form this neo-avant-garde, which could not look back at the historical avant-garde, could they separate their dislike for the political ideology that somehow tarnished the memory of this futuristic movement? Could they identify the positive things? I'm thinking of that agonistic feature that Renato Poggioli so cleverly singled out in his uh, book about the avant-garde. And that agonistic feature was very strong in futurism, at least the futurists before First World War. And most of those artists, they died fighting for that war that they considered the only hygiene possible. And therefore, that agonistic sense survives not because the 63 go into war and die, but because they manage to overcome themselves by disappearing. But is there something else that the group of 63 acknowledged in futurism, some debt that they were aware of? I think there was not a, a direct uh, assumption of uh, descendants, hmm? but uh, there was in certain critics uh, of, of the group a great uh, respect uh, and interest for the futurist uh, experience that it was very easy to free from its political, from its political surface. Because the, the fact that Marinetti was a fascist uh, or loved the war doesn't doesn't subtract to its poems and to its parole libertad the charm the, the power and in the same way in which Sanguinetti and other people took very seriously as a pound. Huh? Okay, he was crazy. And to do what he did in politics because he didn't understand uh, anything, but uh, the point, the poetry is there. And so uh, the group uh, dealt with uh, uh, particular respect with all those uh, tradition. Try to, to try to, to, to uh, I think that the the, the influence of Ezra Pound on poets like Sanguinetti, and I think that. Uh, the influence of futurism on, on Balestrini is, uh, is evident. But you know, you can even find that there was a moment in which, in which Antonio Porta started to reread the Danunzio. And he took it uh, with a certain respect. So the group was re exploring the past of, of Italian uh, literature. Uh, obviously, the the, the respected father was Gada. Okay. Uh, because it was an odor that uh, always made experiments on language. But nothing to do with avant garde, the poor Gada, because he was a timid engineer that uh, didn't appear in public uh, manifestation. It was very shy, but it was a great. Uh, a great, uh, a, it made great experiments on language. Uh, so that's the difference between between experimentalism and uh, and um, avant-garde. 
It happened even that some of the of the people of Group 63 tried to reevaluate even Moravia. Moravia that was very suspicious of what was happening there, but very curious, and he put always his nose there to understand what happened. It was a, a strange courtship between the old and the new generation with some with some ritual. Uh, parricide, the ritual homicide, and uh, secret, uh, secret love, loving, secret adulterous meetings. <laughs> I didn't have the pleasure to read your article that I saw the intellectuality is organic, and I really would like to know what is your opinion about the redefinition. I suppose there is always a role that one of the intellectual that need to be redefined in a different period of time, and we are all aware there probably, I don't know if we know at what stage of this media revolution we are, but I would like to know what is your opinion about um, what really is the role of an intellectual today, if still need to be organic, is just the way that possibly an intellectual has to be, or we are all intellectuals, I, I read in another article of Alphabeta too. Thank you. Was, I was ready. To answer your question, I would have written an aphorism and not a long article. <laughs> uh, I simply say, okay, there is a sunset of the old uh, communist organic intellectual, but it is an old story. I think that the organic intellectuals were killing with Calvinos the baron of the trees. Inside the the end of the so-called organic intellectual, which was obliged to, to rank with the party. And I remember that after Cavino and after Norberto Bobbio, I don't know if you are familiar with this thinker, I was, uh, I always written the intellectual, the first duty of an intellectual is to write against is or her your own party, not against the enemies of his party, because they are the press office that are doing it. So once uh, we have eliminated the uh, stupid organic intellectuals, Bonaparte of the old Gramsci, uh, the intellectuals always have a, a role of. Uh, how do you call the Grillo Parlante, Jiminy the Cricket in Pinocchio? Okay, it has this role. With the risk of being <coughs> splashed uh, down at the happened uh, to the Jiminy Cricket in, in, in Pinocchio. But that is the role of the uh, of the intellectual which has nothing to do with a certain party or with a that's a point I had to thank so very much, Umberto Eco. Wonderful, wonderful.